Serious. People who have survived a murder attempt by dumb luck. What's your story? Throw away. Because it got some media. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I was representing this guy that had embezzled almost $500,000 from his business partner. He was looking down the barrel at several years in prison. A bunch of his assets had been seized by the government, was being sued by multiple creditors for north of $2 million, and was in the midst of an ugly divorce and wasn't allowed to see his kids. I was one of three liars he had, criminal, civil and divorce. He was drinking a lot and using coke. I used to get this incoherent phone calls in the middle of the night that ranged from threats to crying. He came to my office one day and asked for me, but I was in court. My secretary said he was perfectly civil. He then went to his divorce lawyer's office and shot him to death. Got stopped by the police a short distance away and was wounded in a shootout. He would later tell the cops that he had come to my office to shoot me that day and also planned to shoot his civil attorney. Why? You were presumably hired on to defend him so why did he even do that? So confusing. He was not in a rational state of mind. People sometimes have a tendency to blame their lawyers when the situation isn't going to get resolved how they like. I know two other attorneys who have been assaulted or threatened with weapons by clients. Now I want to see and ask Reddit about lawyers who have defended high violent criminals and feared for their leaves afterwards, particularly LF they were successful. My supposed best friend decided that my wife and I were too perfect, therefore it must all be an act and I was obviously abusing her. He was at our house after I made an awesome dinner and we were having fun drinking and singing karaoke. I went to the kitchen to put some glasses away came back and leaned on the couch with him slightly behind me to the left of me. Then I heard a thunk and felt an amazing amount of pain on the top of my head. He had picked up the whiskey bottle on the table and smashed it into my skull. I was very confused as to what the frick was happening. Then the blood started pouring. I didn't want to get blood everywhere so I went to the kitchen. Dude is pacing back and forth saying weird it. I thought about my gun, which was close by, but I wasn't thinking quite straight. He left. I had a huge concussion and still suffer side effects from it. My number two goal in life is to live longer than that a it just so I can it on his grave. What happened with him? Is he in jail? Absolutely nothing. The legal system let me down big time. They called him and asked what happened and that was all. They wouldn't even grant me a restraining order. What the frick? What country are you in that they don't do anything about this? I, 18f back then, now 25, was on my way home at night after meeting a friend. My home was just 10 minutes away from the train station. After a few minutes I felt someone following me. No big deal I thought. Just someone else walking home. But I started walking faster. I realized the person behind me was catching up. Weird. In my head I started to make up scenarios of how to defend myself if the person would attack me. Never would I think of this to actually happen. Well. Until I felt something on the back of my head. Hitting me hard. I went furious. I turned around and attacked the guy. My mind was just full of anger towards this stranger who, what I thought, hit me. We were wrestling until I fell on the ground. He was sitting on top of me, strangling me. I tried to crawl my nails into his eyes as deep as I could, but I started to black out. Suddenly there was this thought in my head wake up, or you will die. Well, adrenaline kicked in again and I opened my eyes and screamed of the top of my lungs, attacking him again. That helped. He stood up and began to run. I lay there for a few seconds. Then I started to run home, still screaming. My mom was already at her door and opened for me, because my screams woke her up, or her mother's senses, who knows. She immediately called the cops and they could arrest him on the same night. It turned out that he actually shot me in my head from behind. They assumed that the gun didn't work properly, the bullet didn't penetrate my skull and stuck in there, but as far as I know they never found out why the gun misfired. I'm glad though. He told the cops that he already followed me a few times in the past but never had the guts to do it. He wanted to kill me and rape my dead body. I know that's a wild story. I have some Swiss newspaper articles as a source if someone cares though. That's a hell of a tale. Glad you're okay now. Sources would be interesting, but that's just the morbid curiosity talking to be honest. I was exiting a bar once after last call and was with a friend who was a medic. We saw a girl laying in a snowbank near a telephone pole who had just been hit by a car. We ran over and tried to help her. Some others were already on the phone with 911 and I, not having any medical training didn't have anything to contribute, but didn't want to just leave. The whole situation was concerning. I turn around for a second and start to hear people screaming. Um, I turn around a minivan was heading for us. The few people around this woman, 
They already started to run, but I was too late. Um, he hit me as I was trying to flee. Um, put the car in reverse, ran over me again, and then went forward and run over me a third time. Turns out the guy was high and drunk and got into a fight with the women's boyfriend, whom I bared a strong resemblance to. He thought I was him, not to throw a pity party for myself. But nine years later I have a ton of medical issues, and my life pretty much started on a downward spiral since then. Um, but sure, I guess I survived. Man, I'm really sorry that happened to you. Hope you're doing better now. Thanks man. Um, not really. And as I get older, I'm 33 now. I'm assuming everything is just going to get worse. I do realize how do man gloomy that sounds though. Just a real concern I have. You've had a traumatic experience. If it's possible for you, I would strongly suggest you consider seeing a therapist that specializes in trauma. I'm doing that right now, and it's changed my life. I was 14 and outside in my garage petting my cat. It was November so it was already dark by 5 p.m. Someone opened the door behind me without me hearing, grabbed me by my ponytail and starting dragging me outside. They hit me on my head with a brick and knocked me out, pulled me halfway around my house when, I'm guessing this is when, they stabbed me on the left side of my stomach. This must have brought me out of my daze, because my mom said she heard me scream from inside where she and my brother and sister were in the kitchen. They came out the front door and saw me bleeding out on the sidewalk, called 911, had 12 stitches, double layer, a severe concussion, and whiplash. Didn't eat and hardly slept for a week. They never found them. Horrid. So glad you survived. Thank you. Me too. I'm 27 now. Feels like a different life. This is so fricked up. Honestly those are the crimes that simply scare me. What the frick? That is so terrifying. So glad you are okay. Well, my mom got mad at me when I was 20 and I didn't give her money for her birthday which I'm assuming was to pay off drug dealers of hers. So, she stabbed me between the ribs, ended up getting stuck in the bone and had to get it taken out in surgery. I was riding in a train across Eastern Europe. I was running low on money and even though I had been warned that a woman should not travel alone in second class seating I did not spring for first class. I was sitting alone in one of the compartments that seats six. This was also a mistake and a very stupid one to sit alone. Eventually the train stopped and a man got on. He was very drunk. He came into my compartment and I guess thought I looked like his ex-wife. He attacked me. If it were not for the fact that this particular station was the border between two countries I would be dead. Instead border patrol from both countries were on the train and while I was unable to scream, the door was open and at least a half a dozen uniformed men jumped him and saved me. I was in the hospital for a little while, but recovered. At one point during the trial, one of the cops asked me if I wanted him and his buddies to hold the guy down while I hit him. I thought he was joking. So I said no, go ahead you do it. I was also joking, but it turns out they took it seriously and were about to. I did put a stop to that at least. But they were so offended that someone from their country would attack a young female American tourist. They were furious with him. So many people there depended upon tourism. But it turns out they took it seriously and were about to. I grew up in Ukraine. That guy probably got beat up later lol. No doubt. He got his ass kicked as soon as the trial was over. My husband and I live above our place of business. That alarm company called us at 3 a.m. to say there was a motion detect alert. Just one. In a weird place. We assumed it was a mouse, but went to reset. Check it out. Husband ended up face to face with a burglar who was on his way out the window he had broken. He ran back inside. I called 911 and we heard mad chaos going on in the depths of the building. So much crashing and smashing. Burglar monkey climbed a 10 feet iron gate, bodily smashed through two sets of commercial grade glass doors and was outside again. My husband was like yeah frick this dude, tore after him and tackled him. He got him on the ground and pinned him. Bear in mind the whole time I'm narrating to 911, and chasing around in panties and tank top. I was a bit behind my husband in the middle of the street about 15 feet away when a minivan squealed around the corner. It was his GF, getaway driver. I luckily missed it. I was super focused on reading the license plate which was one of those cutesy fond out of state ones and therefore hard to read. But she yelled get the frick off him or I'm running your itch over. Then she tried to. The audio and video I had to watch for the trial was horrifying. I had blocked it out nearly completely and really didn't remember how close it was. She guns the engine at me. I throw my hands up in front of my face when I realize what she's doing and scream, and jump out of the way with inches to spare. He jumped in, and off they went. 
he bled all over my husband. Yikes, and eventually the DNA and a partial plate info nailed them. They're both in prison. Addendum, trials suck. Edit it to add. To make this clear, do not do this. Adrenaline is a hell of a drug and it's best to not fight burglars. We definitely both could have died. It was the third time this fricker had broken in and caused dollar sign XX. XXX amount of mostly uninsured damage and inventory loss and that definitely contributed to the whole thing. He wouldn't have stopped doing it. He was a pro and was doing upwards of three jobs a night most nights, all over the state, for years. Bear in mind the whole time I'm narrating to 911 and chasing around in panties and tank top. And this, my friends, is why I never sleep naked. A while back there was an Escredit post asking people who sleep naked what they do if there was an emergency. One of the top answers was something like if it's actually an emergency worth getting out of bed for, it's not worth taking the time to get dressed for, I agree and still sleep naked, I mean it. Maybe one day in my life a burglar busts in or my house is on fire and I have to run outside and be temporarily naked. I wouldn't give up a lifetime of sleeping more comfortably for the remote possibility of maybe some people seeing me naked on what's going to be one of the worst days of my life anyway. My sister had this one friend when we were growing up I always got a bad vibe from. She would try to pick on my little brother, but I would always stop her. I was 8, she was 10. Once we were at a lake and all the kids were swimming, I swam out to the deep roped off part, but I was still little and really shouldn't have. She kept acting weird and getting closer to me making this weird laugh. She pushed me off the wooden pole in the water and I got scared and started to swim back, but she came up behind me and pushed me under the water. It didn't click at first that she was trying to drown me, but after she aggressively pushed me under the third time I had this crazy moment of clarity. It was like the world slowed down ever so briefly, I relaxed and let myself sink, swam underneath her, and came up behind her. I grabbed her hair and shoved her face into the water keeping my legs on her back so her body couldn't rise. I waited until her struggling slowed down and let her come up. I waited in the water saying nothing, bracing myself for her retaliation, but she just looked panicked and swam back to shore. I told my sister who had already expressed that the girl was weird. We confronted her together and she just looked really dazed. In a monotone voice she said I'm sorry, I didn't know it would be like that. It wasn't until I replayed those words in my mind later that I realized what she was saying was sorry I tried to drown you. It wasn't until I was almost drowned myself that I realized how horrible it is to do to someone. You might have taught her empathy that day with your self-defense tactic. You might have saved someone's future life and kept her out of prison. Comma. Thank you for the silver. Thank you? I definitely hope so. After I wrote this I reached out to my sister to see if she remembered the girl's last name. I looked her up and she doesn't have a lot in the way of social media so it's hard to tell what's going on in her life. She's 28 now, but it'll be interesting to keep up with what happens to her. Why is it that these kids from our childhood never seem to exist on social media? Serious. I had a guy high on both meth and acid break into my app Arterman in college. Somehow he was convinced he lost his glasses inside. I'm doing dishes when my door gets slammed open. Next thing I know he is behind me I'm being choked to death in my kitchen. As I was losing consciousness I grabbed my roommate's acrylic bong and frantically swung over my shoulder into his face. The bong broke, but did nothing as the guy was choking me even harder. So I swung it again, because the bong broke the first time I was hitting the guy with a 6 inch claw of acrylic glass. Afterward his scalp and part of his cheek were hanging off the side of his face. Essentially I scalped him with a bong. So I chased the guy out of my house. There was easily 2 feet of snow outside. He tries walking back to his house through a cemetery as a shortcut seriously, and he passes out in the cemetery. The police only found him, because I called the cops and they followed the blood and footprints through the snow. And that's the part I was surprised about the most. I hit the guy on his scalp. There wasn't much blood in his scalp compared to most of the body, but my kitchen was covered in blood. His blood was on my refrigerator, counter, floor and selling. Um, it was almost as traumatic to clean it. My roommates were gone for winter break. Thank God my roommate's girlfriend came over and helped me. Now as for the guy, the cops couldn't charge him for two days, because he needed blood transfusions. He was charged with assault, breaking and entering an attempted murder, and he def had drugs on him too. Not sure what he got convicted of, but he went to jail for four years. There is a lot of blood in your head. Even a small cut will bleed longer and more than most other body parts. I split my eyebrow open doing something stupid as a kid about 10 yo. It wasn't big only needed 3 stitches, but there was so much blood when I found my mum she thought I was covered in mud, 
When she realized it was blood she nearly fainted. I cracked my head open on a radiator as a six-year-old. Still have the scar 11 years later. There was blood on my radiator, floor, TV, walls, door, lift switch, corridor floor, corridor wall, parents door, parents wall, my dad. It was everywhere. And my dad refused to take me to the hospital, as it was too early. Free healthcare here too. 15-minute drive to the walk-in center. Ended up cutting up some plasters to make cherry plasters and some bike punk tire kit glue for super glue. God knows what he was thinking. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.